This is Bumper to Bumper TV. Jumping into the compact hybrid segment with both feet, so to speak, the Hyundai Ioniq is trying to offer something for consumers who want choice in their alternative fuel vehicles. At 176 inches in total length, the Ioniq is on the larger side of the compact segment, which has been where hybrids have found the most success in the past 20 years. Now the technology has evolved from near-experimental shared gasoline and electric drivetrains to plug-in platforms that can run on either energy source and to fully electric vehicles. That's appealing to a significant portion of future drivers. Is a lot of um, millennials, um, their future purchase considerations is hybrids, plug-in hybrids, electric vehicles, and, and uh, hydrogen uh, fuel cells. So um, by 2020, we have estimates that um, Gen Y will represent 40% of cells. So I if they want these type of technologies in the future, um, uh, we're going to deliver them, and, and so will the industry. To meet that perceived demand, the Ionic launches with three different drivetrains, a conventional gasoline-electric hybrid with a 1.6-liter Atkinson cycle engine rated at 104 horsepower and 109 pound-feet of torque. It shares the workload with a 240-volt lithium-ion battery for a combined output of 139 horsepower. Instead of a CVT, the Ionic has a six-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission, which can be set to a sport mode and deliver a more aggressive response. The plug-in version uses the same Atkinson-style engine, but has a bigger battery rated at 360 volts and can operate in pure electric mode for 27 miles. Due to some slick engineering with the main power source, a traditional 12-volt battery has been eliminated. If the engine needs a jump, there's a reset switch to send power to the block. The full electric version uses the same 360-volt battery as the plug-in to run its motor. The transmission here is a single-speed reduction gear, which is very close to a CVT gearbox in operation. Like other fully electric vehicles, it is so quiet at highway speed, you can almost hear your own thoughts. Paddle shifters can adjust the level of regenerative braking depending upon a driver's needs at the time. Engineers also reconfigured the connecting port to use more than one kind of power source. This is the 1772, the, this is the level 2 charging port, and then this right here is the SAE combo. So uh, the difference with this is that this is all one plug that you can plug in. That allows the Ionic to use level 3 charges to refresh the battery a lot faster. What Hyundai has done with the Ionic is to use the leading technologies for alternative drivetrains in the sedan. So don't be surprised if we see the same approach used in other segments of the passenger car market to keep appealing to the millennial buyers who will have different transportation needs as they grow up. This is Greg Morrison. We want to know what you think, so email us. The address is bumper to bumper tv at cs.com.